All right, so we're back for uh, six part of glasses, and oh, That's perfect good. timing. Good timing. Uh, so we just started. So uh, oh, television land. Right. Yeah. So oh, we're going to just get over. So uh, once again, Marco, George, Clay, Mark, Tim, and Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> or at least so, off his head. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we got. Well, I'll just I'll scooch in a little bit. So uh, we're doing the second part of the glasses tasting. This time we're doing um, Sculpin IPA. Um, we had some really. Yeah, I have to. Yeah, it's like that. So uh, we're doing the Sculpin IPA, and uh, we're going to try a shaker glass versus uh, the other five. So um, I don't think we need an introduction if you guys paid attention to the last podcast. If not, go back and watch it. Sweet. So uh, go ahead. Whoever wants to start with the shaker, yeah. Or are you as well? No, this is what I was actually kind of a bit confused, is that our beer looks very much like your beer. Yeah, well, you guys are and we are yeah, drinking cool. Lagunitas IPA. That was it that we were... Yeah. Yeah. The color is... Yeah. Yeah. So uh, while we're waiting, let's see. Andrew, you can scooch into the show. I'm in here. All right, good. Um, you can talk so, about the scope of IPA while we're already getting a baseline. A sculpin IPA obviously is going to have to have some, some pretty profound aroma and then that sort of tropical fruity note um, in the bitterness of hops. So because of the hop selection, they're going with aroma and they're going with that sort of bitterness at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the, the drink. Uh, a lot of beers that are uh, produced in Southern California are going to get you with a lot of grapefruit, briny, bitterness up front, it's going to be softer, and you're going to find the bitterness at the end. Um, in the shaker, you don't get a lot of aroma. The beer is also pretty cold. I must say that we had the keg rooter down on the zero, so All right. it's perhaps a little bit too cold. Yeah, so by the time we're done with this, it all should warm up. Uh, you don't have to do it in order. Um, now that everybody's got a face on, you guys can take yours. I know Mark's going to be checking out in the middle, but... Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps Sorry, guys. the Boston Beer Company are, are turning over because Rebel yeah. just is this tasty. <laughs> so um, you guys missed the first one. Um, what we did, um, we actually we started the Lagunita and Pilsner, and it actually came out in our opinion fairly true to style. The Pilsner worked really well with the Pilsner glass. Um, you know, it's a really light, it's a really light beer, with really much more subtle hopping. Um, which is how all the Pilsner glass works. So we want to do something a little bit maltier, but also a little bit hoppier to see if, um, you know, we'll obviously notice the changes between the glasses, but we'll just kind of get a feeling for what the difference is and see if we can kind of do an overall pick. Oh, it's actually going to be a little bit... With the uh, Hefeweizen in the glass, I'm getting... It's more bitter than the shaker and the aroma, the hop yeah. aroma tails off. It definitely got a ton of bitterness when I first drank it. Yeah, yeah. there's not a lot of hop aroma. From there, from the IPA glass to the uh, ultimate, which I think are very similar in shape. It's. I think the uh, yeah the ultimate glass is uh, still wanting as far as uh, the style, which it's uh, meant for. So far, I have to say, I have to say that between the goblet and the IPA glass, something to do about the way the beer sits in it, just has a nice feel. Maybe a just familiar point. Mm. Having it in the uh, American pine glass is just a familiar yeah. kind of feeling. Do you, yeah. do, do you feel, though, that it has a little bit more malt to it, a little bit more body to it, a little bit more rounded in the uh, in the pine glass compared to the IPA glass? Like, that's what I, I just feel like the IPA glass, I really like the IPA glass. I think it's got, like, a really aromatic nose, but I just, I, I think that actually it, 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 it feels like it's got a little bit almost lighter body than it does in the glass. Well, one of the things, too, we also noticed uh, in the last episode that we talked about was the uh, actual thickness of the glass. It really changes the perception of the beer much more than I even was really expecting. Oh, that's interesting. Right, because when you hold this, this is a familiar kind of... But also the mouthfeel, right? Like, right? So go, go from one of those to one of these. Well, that, that's, that's, like, this is the first one I had of the Spiegelau, going from that to that, and I really felt that there was a significant difference in the mouthfeel. Very And for me, that just, it, this feels less heavy. Wow, that, that is amazing. You get so much more uh, riny, kind of uh, zesty smells yeah. out of the Hefeweizen uh, glass. Well, that's yeah. We noticed the same thing. On the See, this is more what I was expecting last time. Yeah. 
I what find I'm, there's really no nose in that. Those in the glass. What I'm, yeah, what I'm, yeah, what I'm yeah, getting, yeah, flat. I'll agree. It's like what I'm getting from the uh, Hefeweizen and the uh, Pilsner. It's they're both. Yeah, that'd be like almost very like boring. It's deal. very boring. I mean, I'd almost go back. It's, uh, it's, 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 I'm, more, I'm, I'm more willing to go back to the. Uh, I'm more willing to go back to the uh, shaker. But the best uh, notes. The I think the IP, I don't know for me the IPA glass has the best yeah. notes. Yeah. It's a toss up for me between it's like uh, the uh, IPA glass and the. Uh, two yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks for correcting me, Ron. But then, <laughs> if, I mean, if, if you actually yeah. think about the style, the earlier. pills are in a wheat are not like about the aroma as much, right? So, that kind of makes sense. But, I mean, compared to the last, I mean, okay, so let's, we've all, everybody had one from everyone or close enough? Yeah, I've not done the other Okay, so we'll uh, start with. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so shaker, uh, Shaker, what what do we guys think of the shaker? I mean, it's pretty standard, is what everybody's drinking. Yeah, it's drinking an IPA, yeah, and, uh, yeah, one of my favorite bars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would say it's like drink, and I love, I love, I love it gives a nice body to it. Yeah. And um, to be honest, I mean, it's not as fragrant yeah. as perhaps the IPA glass, really but just overall, like you know, feel for it. I just, I actually prefer the shaker. Here's something interesting on, on the shaker point. Um, a lot of people talk about the insulation properties of the Spiegelau glass. And it's true, it's scientifically proven. These glasses hold the temperature of the beer longer. But perhaps in this case, the shaker, uh, in this case being a uh, you know a standard U.S. pint glass, has actually warmed the beer up. And in that in that transfer of heat into the into the glass, which if you can see here in television podcast land, is a much thicker lip than say a similar a similar diameter of glass. Okay, you can see here. Perhaps side by side. Oh, we can show it. Up. Right? Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll do some and, uh, yeah. and, uh, What that's doing is that is uh, transferring the the temperature is being pulled away from the beer and going into the body. Here it's very thin uh, and it's insulated, so the insulation properties are different. And as a result, the, the beer temperature is much warmer. And now the nose is starting to come up. It's starting nose to starting to come out of Sam Adams as well. Yeah. I think it, it changes the way that you hold the glass as well, right? The yeah. so shaker glass, you hold it like a tree stump. Yeah, like Because this is big burly glass. These ones you hold probably maybe only with two or three fingers when you drink from it. So you're going to transfer a lot of body heat into the shaker glass. Right, here on a, on a pint glass, I usually slide my pinky underneath the pint. Yeah. And on a, on a glass like this, you're your finger is free. Same thing here, you're gonna grab actually this this is the pills it's a pills in right? This you actually have your hand around it so it's actually holding in your hand. This this is a, a pinch. And I'm not sure what the Sam Adams is. I think it's kind of, you can go yeah, kind of in between, right? You're kind of pinching but also kind of pinching underneath. Yeah, it's all really bad. But this, as this one's heating up because it's you know, it's a little bit better glass, but it's still pretty thick. This one's changing a little bit too. Tim, what are your impressions? Yeah, like I said, I, I just think that uh, for me, I, I like the shaker, I like the regular pint glass the best because uh, perhaps the temperature was like a little bit more suitable, um, had a better mouthfeel, better body, it didn't have, wasn't quite as aromatic, um, but I could forgive that just for the overall mouthfeel and how much I like as an IPA. It felt like this is like a 7% IPA, which, which is what it is. Whereas I drank it in the IPA glass, I did like it, but it was a slightly different beer because it felt lighter. It felt a little bit more air, more aromatic, but the overall milk feel wasn't just quite the same as what I did with my class. Which, for me, I completely agree, and is uh, something that I liked about the IPA glass, where it's so you're off. Uh, well, no, it's a, you know, same notes, but it's like for me that was a uh, that was a desirable. Yeah, okay. where it's, it's like it's like got the it's like, it's like really like the uh, focusing of that aroma and the fact that it lightened up that body a little bit more uh, to go ahead and it's like you know, bring kind of a uh, different it's a you know, bring a different element. To the beer instead right. of like you know, feeling like you know you're kind of uh, slogging away through a uh, seven percent hop monster. Um, you also it's like you know, for the uh, you know close up uh, after that would be the tulip glass for yeah. similar reasons uh, that I said before, and um, the others I can go ahead. The others I can honestly uh, I can take or leave. Yeah, I, I think the pilsner and the and the, uh, the wheat glass. I just think for an IPA, and especially if you're pouring just that much, how much we're getting, I just think don't even bother because you don't get the body, you don't get the aroma, and it just comes overall is not that very interesting. I'm sorry, I mean, I, 
I don't disagree with anything that's been said. Uh, you know, going back to some of the points that you were bringing up, Tim, I think it's uh, you know, it's important to think about. You know, the IPA glass. If you're a hothead, the IPA glass is definitely the way to go. Um, but you can also say that the you know the, the brewers, you know, maybe they're brewing the beer to be. Drink out of the out of the shaker, so yeah, it has, it has the balance and it has the it has everything that the brewer is trying to put into the beer. You know, if you really like hops, they're both IP glass. But they they so in, in in the UK, the difference between the north of England and the south of England is a completely different way of serving cask beer. So in the north of England, you put a sparkler on the yeah on the tap. Which splits the beer into sort of five or six jets, which puts all the aroma in the head of it. And uh, the southern southern style of beer making is without the sparkle. And I've drink, I've had beers that I've loved up north, down south, that are just not worth drinking. And I've had beers that I've made in the south of England, up in the north, and they're just not right. So the the brewer is always thinking about their own backyard, like what how people are going to drink that beer. It's like how Belgians brew. Belgian beer to fit in a Belgian style glass. It's very much engineered that way to fit this glass in the how it's traditionally. So you're saying that we shouldn't drink Belgian beers out of Dixie cups. <laughs> I agree. Okay, so that's a, that's a big 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 or we Mark, you need to go, so let's we're gonna Sorry. we'll take a cut right here. Um, Brothers, you're out. Thank you for having me around. Yep. Um, Great to see you. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, well. uh, see, see you next uh, Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> True story. Yeah. Um, Saturday. Saturday. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 12th or 13th or 11th. Yes. So, so we'll, we'll let Mark sneak out real quick and then we'll... Uh, the joys of digital, digital is... Uh, when I go ahead, just like, just go ahead and cut it so I disappear with that. <laughs> We can get some smoke bombs, right? Yeah. We didn't like Mark's last comment and we vaporized him. Yeah. Chop it on! Mark's like, I think, oh, and then just gone. I haven't dressed as greed, oh. <laughs> Mark shot first! <laughs> Whole new meme. Mark drank first! Alright. Alright. John, pleasure to see you. See you, Mark. Yeah. See you, Mark. Yeah. Mark. All right, so I, I think Clay bought, Clay and uh, George bought. So Mark left. That's a really good point, though. But he, I mean, I think it is a really interesting response. Really yeah, it's just like, yeah, it's mm -hmm. But I mean, that doesn't bring up a question that we didn't talk about in the last episode of what are they calibrating these beers to, right? If, if the brewer's drinking out of the shaker glass, he's that's what he's calibrating to. So, in a sense that if you drink a beer out of any other glass, you're getting something that's not exactly what the brewer intended. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you can't fault Spiegel off from trying to accentuate those characteristics yeah. of these individual beers, but yeah, you also have to consider right. that. Right, so when they made this uh, this particular glass with dogfish heads with uh, Sierra Nevada, they those brewers came to the conclusion that this vessel uh, highlighted certain points of their beer, which they particularly were yeah. interested in the consumer getting. Whereas, you know, I've had, like, just recently I had some pizza board beer that was 10 times more fragrant out of a, out of a shaker than it would be, you know, probably out of any of these other glasses. Why? Yeah. Right? Because it's just the way that they're brewing on that system. Yeah, like a little 20 barrel system. You know, it's gonna it's it's gonna have a different and that's the other thing is the beer the beer's profile is different also based on the system you brew. Yeah. No, yeah, I mean scientifically there's a reason why all most of the awards go to small to mid sized breweries. Why? Because they're able to hit that sort of a sweet spot of flavor, and balance, and aroma, and bitterness, which is hard to reproduce on a massive 500 barrel or seven. Some brewers do it. Yeah, it's hard to do consistently. But it just goes to show that there's this range. There's like this, there's this mid, small to mid-sized range, which is a sweet spot. If you're little, you can't really get there. You need to be here. Then once you go beyond that, you lose it. 
Mm-hmm. And then you really got to be up here. Yeah. You can be a bigger brewer with all that technical skill set. So it's kind of interesting. You look at Sam Adams, six million barrels of beer. It's a lot of fucking beer. Yeah. But they still care about their glass. Yeah. And that's unique that they actually have a glass. Good for them. Oh, we're coming up with the Samuel Adams glass. Oh, yeah, this has been around for what, like seven, eight years now? Seven years. Yeah. Well, when I go to an uh, airport, I usually like go to the airports. Yeah. When I have a uh, uh, Samuel Adams, you know, uh, you know, water in an airport, it's always good. It tastes good. Yeah. I had one at a barbecue place about three months ago. It was, I got a Giant. And, and you know, actually, as this, you know, what you're talking earlier about insulation, as this warms up a little bit, I'm getting a little bit more character out of this than we did initially. Sure. You know, and you have, you have it similar to the Hefeweizen, you have this kind of, I'm sorry, this bell shape, so it agitates when you, after every drink, right? So you get a little bit more aroma release. Oh, that's interesting. Right, right, the shape of the glass. Uh, yeah, that, that would help yeah. over here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is a point where it's over. Yeah. I think going back to what Tim was saying, like, the shaker is his favorite. And we found this in the last beer that we tried. It was the one, it was the one glass that did not accentuate anything in particular. Yeah. The, the, all the, the, I mean, the, we found the Pilsner one didn't accentuate Pilsner. But all of them are designed to extend you, you know, to make some flavors a lot bigger than they are. Yeah, and, and especially in the last one, we, we definitely found that the method wise and accentuated the yeast. I came to a def, def, definitely accentuated the aroma, aroma characteristics. Pilsner, we just liked overall because it, it gave kind of a balance to its overall impression. It was basically the shaker, but amped up a little bit. But, you know, I'm actually, the results of what your guys' impression, you guys coming in, and even just all of our general impression on the IPA versus the Pilsner on these classes is honestly not what I was expecting. I mean, I thought we'd all be like, oh, you know what, IPA glass is great, or a tulip is better. Um, I, I really like George's point, though, about that, you know, beer has, beer has placement, it has a place in the world. So like, you know, if you're a Belgian brewer, you're in Belgium, you think about the, the, the beer going into a vessel that meets the standard of your, of your glassware thought. In other words, when you make something, you're not pouring it into this, you're pouring it into some kind of a tulip or a goblet or something, yeah, something closer. Well, that makes more, I mean, and that's so, and so in, in Britain, in England, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna, you're gonna have, you know, this real pint style glass, so that that, whether it's um, going to be a straight pour or it's going to be a sort of, I was going to start with a spark, spark or spark, but that's going to change the dynamic entirely. Right? Because one of the things that we know that changes the flavor of beer is oxygen. Yeah. So to, to, to a sparkler, you're actually introducing oxygen to the beer at a point where you're forcing its, you're forcing its hand and you're just making it show its, its aroma now versus later, right? Because yeah. a cold beer, you pour it into a glass, it's cold, it insulates well. It's going to stay tight and not want to come out. It's going to take more time. Whereas here, you discover that the glass absorbs a lot of that initial temperature. To not yeah. So your, your, your hand is cold on the outside here. But the pure is warm. Yeah. Try it's warmer, much warmer. Did you guys also find that these glasses, like especially at the end, there, there's very little combination. Yeah, the combination I mean, especially with these, right? Because you're getting agitation every time. Yeah. You're drinking, so it's going to agitate a lot more. All right, well, it's starting to get uh, wonderfully noisy up in the hangar bar here, so I think it's kind of tough. Tasting room. I know. Sorry, tasting room. Sorry, my apologies. Six one. We'll edit that out, yeah. Whatever you want. Um, but um, you guys, thank you very much for your opinions. It was really, um, really informative, really good time. Um, hopefully, people enjoy the po- uh, podcast and uh, YouTube. So, uh, cool. So, everybody, grab uh, whatever is uh, left to them. Just, just a wee bit for everybody. And-
Cheers. 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 Cheers.